What's up, guys? <clears throat> it's Chris. Welcome to HP Engines. So, uh, <laughs> I was watching, uh, ooh, shit, cobwebs, motherfuck. <laughs> I was watching Christian's, uh, fourth episode, episode four of Honda Vlogs today, and it got me all amped up and excited to do some shit. And now that it's, you know, I have the car in the shop. I got no excuse to come out here at night when I love to work and do some shit. Plus today's a, a rare or tonight is a rare warm night. It's 60 degrees when it's been averaging like 29 usually this time of night. So I figured why not come out and do some shit. Okay. So, um, I know it doesn't look like much has changed in here and I'm sorry about the bad lighting. I think I'm going to get a drop light and hang it off the hood here in the near future. But anyway, um, I pulled all that shit off. It's AC stuff and charcoal canister and uh i went ahead and pulled off the front bumper uh, i was gonna pull off the crash bar uh but i need extensions to get in there uh man it seems like it's about time now that I, i'm gonna be in here working a lot it's it's about time to take another trip to harbor freight and you buy some extensions buy some more wrenches and buy another ratchet set because this is this is gonna be a pain in the ass working with minimal tools or dragging shit back and forth from work um yeah, so I figured that this is going to be its own little vlog series kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to come out here and talk about this some more as I'm working on it. Just let you guys know where it's at because I know that this is something that's been a topic for a long time when you're going to do your own project. Um, so when it comes time to get it running, I need to come out here and reset timing. So I need to pop the valve cover off, actually make sure the timing's on point because the, the pulley's on here wobbly. And I kind of remember just throwing it together when I was leaving because I literally put the swap in the day before I left Miami. I just wanted to swap in there so that way I didn't have to pull the swap or in the moving truck and take space up. So I was gonna tow the car so it made more sense to have it in there. Um, and okay, so normally <clears throat> with my intercooler mock-up, what I normally do is uh, I cut I cut the crash bar out and I use the, ca the crash bar as the brace. But uh, I'm also dealing with a much bigger intercooler than I've ever used before and the car's really low to the ground. So I definitely do not believe that's gonna work. So I'm going to just take off the crash bar like I did with the EF I had and just mount it right there because uh, I don't really don't want to have to chop up my bumper if I don't have to. Uh, and it's just going to save me a lot of time and headache to do it like that because I can just, you know, either use some existing holes lined up to put the intercooler or I can just fucking pop two holes in with a drill real quick and I can mount it up like that. Plus, whoever used it before uh, did some ghetto ass, you know, Things like I've actually had this intercooler for all fucking years, years waiting to do this. Uh, it's it's kind of beat up though. It kind of makes me feel a little nervous. The guy told me it was holding boost, but of course, you know, shady people aren't gonna lie or aren't gonna tell you the truth. The shit's broken and they're trying to sell it. Uh, there's a big, really big dent there. That's the only one that's big that caused me any concern. But I think that I might get lucky, have a little faith in humanity. Maybe I won't have any boost leaks. If I do, well, no big deal. I'll buy another intercooler. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take this crash bar off <clears throat> and definitely mount up the intercooler. I'm going to mock up the intercooler. Uh, I don't really have that much piping, intercooler piping wise. So I'm going to have to probably buy some shit. Probably buy some generic shit. Because that's all I have to work with, which isn't too much. Uh, also, like I mentioned, uh, the turbo rebuild's coming pretty soon. This is actually my original turbo from my very first turbo setup. Um, but it's definitely... I don't know if you can hear it or not. But it's definitely worn out. I got me a cheap rebuild kit. I'm going to see how that works. If not, again, buy a new turbo. Not a big deal. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm probably going to use some coolant lines from the, or some generic hoses from the auto parts for a return line to the, for the, to the oil pan. But I need to buy new fittings for the turbo for the lines because I don't have either fitting because I used them on the turbo that went on the car that got stolen. And also need to get a new feed line. Uh, that's not too expensive, so I'm not tripping on that or anything. Um, okay, so uh, John, John fucking hit me up, and John's gonna provide a wire harness. And Irvin hit me up, and he's gonna provide some NGK spark plug wires. Both the I know John's been around for a very long time. Irvin's a name that I recognize, and I'm pretty sure he's also been around the channel for a long time. Both these guys are cool as fuck. They're both. Um, hooking it up for free. They're going to send me this stuff for free. Um, just to let you know, guys, uh, I greatly, greatly appreciate the donations. Like, like, fucking seriously appreciate it. But you don't have to. Don't feel any pressure like you have to give it to me for free. 
Uh, I don't mind paying for the stuff I need. Um, I'm asking you guys to give you time to kind of scramble some shit together, and then maybe you want to send it to me. And, uh, and now, if you want to h- hook it up at a good price, like uh, like Justin did with the T bracket. I mean, on average, when I was in Miami, I'd pay like forty bucks for a T bracket. I'd you know go pick it up, but as he sends me thirty five, and that's covering his shipping cost too. So that's a great homeboy hookup price right there. And it's technically is cheaper than what I normally pay for, and it's coming to my door, so that's great. Uh, but anyway, guys, when, I, when I'm asking for parts or whatnot, I'm not asking or expecting you guys to give it to me for free. Uh, I would appreciate you not raping me on the price. But, you know, hit me up with your price request and whatnot. And then if it's a decent deal, I'll, I'll definitely jump on it. Um, as far as the starter goes, I'll probably just order a starter off eBay. Um, but I do need a distributor now. I need a distributor. And uh, once I get the distributor, I'll have everything I need to actually turn the car on. I don't need the radiator mounted up just to run it for this first time. I definitely plan on doing that. As soon as everything is in this key factor that's in place, I'll, I'll turn it on and have it run. Um, so, need a starter uh, and I need a distributor still, guys. Um, there's a starter guy. Don't worry about it, guys. I'll probably buy that brand new just, uh, just so I don't have to deal with any kind of hassle there in the future. Uh, distributor, definitely don't mind buying used. I usually always buy my star- distributors used because they're, they're really expensive and new. So, once I get the dizzy, the spark plug wires, and the harness on here... And get the timing all straightened out. I'm pretty sure I can actually turn the engine over. And then at that point, we're pretty much done. Besides mock up, you know, slap a turbo on, and you know, and then of course the tune, which I have decided for sure, I'm not going to be doing here. I'm definitely not going to do the tune here. It doesn't make sense for me to go spend 350 or more dollars to tune it here, and then turn right around, drive it down, take it to Florida, and then have to retune it again. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm still open for having another car as a daily driver. I guess it just depends on if I, one pops up at the right price. Uh, I made a video earlier about selling that K20 block over there. If somebody buys that from me, again, no pressure, guys. It's not a big deal because I'm lazy anyway. It's hard for me to get to the post office during the week, so not a big deal. But if I do make any extra money, that'll go towards buying something I can drive around as a daily. Uh, maybe I'll go buy that automatic Del Sol. Um, I've had K-Swap fever again recently. And uh, I think that the Del Sol is probably one of the few cars, one of the few chances I'm willing to buy automatic because my plans for the K, for the uh, Del Sol is eventually K-Swap one. Um, so if I buy that automatic Del Sol, I'll definitely keep it and I'll definitely throw a K in it. Uh, that's, you know, I, that other K2083 that's over there, I'm probably going to get an A2 crank four to A2 pistons, and uh, you know, a forged pistons rods for it. <coughs> get an A2 head and have me a 500 horsepower build there. Uh, that'd be fun. Definitely want to do that. And I even considered, you know, case swapping this eventually one day. Because uh, it's definitely not as clean as I'd like it to be. Like I mentioned in the other video, I want to delete the ABS and do some other stuff to clean up in the back. But I think that if I come down to doing that, that's, I want to pull the swap out again because it'd be much easier. Uh, I don't like working in tight spaces. I, I guess here, another quick uh, little update. I'm gonna do, um, you can't see because it's dark as fuck. The, the catch can that comes on the back of those uh, B18 blocks, I'm going to delete that. I've already ordered the plug. So uh, when I go to a test of shift linkage, I'm going to pop that off and slap the plug in there and get rid of that. Um, I guess I'm going to need to buy some O-rings for the injectors. Or, you know, for the injectors. And I, I still need to pop that B18 fuel rail off and see if it'll fit on here. That'd be cool if it does. Uh, so... But I mentioned a bunch of times that the door wouldn't open because his fender was all kinds of fucked up. You can probably see it. It's a little bit more straightened up and aligned now. The Originally, when I had it outside, I was trying to straighten up with my hands. But because nothing was holding the suspension together, like it would collapse. on The car would collapse, fall apart, and land on the wheel. And it would bend the fuck out of the fender again. Uh, the fender still bent pretty badly, but I don't really care if it's not perfect. Uh, I can round it off a little bit. I guess I can put like a roller or something behind it. Yeah, you can see it's dented in right here. But I could, I'll try to roll it out by hand and no big deal. Or I guess I can always fucking fill it up with Bondo if I go to paint the car. I am going to paint the car. But the cool thing is, is now I can open the car on both sides again. It doesn't grind and rub. That's awesome. Love it. Man, I'm really fucking stoked about this car, man. I'm really fucking happy that I got it to a place where I can work. Out of people's vision, out of people's prying eyes. There's a bunch of old people around here that don't like me working on stuff. Um, yeah, so definitely moving forward. And I think it's safe to say that um, now that I have a Honda channel that I can watch, you know, some car channel I can watch is not just me producing content for myself, you know, because I watch my own videos. 
Um, uh, it's going to get me motivated to come out here and really push forward to work on it. Um, yeah, so today's Monday, Tuesday, and my block is supposed to show up at CNC Works. So I guess uh, sometime tomorrow or maybe Wednesday, I'll hit Jeff up to see if it did show up. And I kind of fucked up too because I was supposed to send like contact information in there. I'm just kind of taking it for granted the fact that because he's doing the sponsorship thing that he kind of is going to recognize me. Plus, he's going to get the, you know, I put, I labeled the VHP engines. I didn't put my name on there. So that way, that takes away a little confusion. Plus, Jesse's sending my pistons in, also labeled as VHP engines. So I'm pretty sure that we're not going to mistake, you know, who it is. I just need to send him PayPal information so I can pay for shipping return. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, the next time I come out here, it probably will be to take off the crash bar and mock up the uh, intercooler and see how I can fit it in smooth with the bumper and get that all back on. And then uh, I, I guess I'm going to dig out the rest of my intercooler piping over there that I have, the little bit I have, and see about mocking it up. Oh, man, actually, I might have to buy some new shit anyway because the fact that normally I run my intercooler piping down through this side the and the ABS is right there. So I'm going to have to fucking run the intercooler piping right here. That presents a whole new challenge because I've never had to do that before. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Uh, I did see, like, when the last time I checked for ABS delete, it was a long time ago. There was, there was only one video on it, and the way the guy did it was kind of ugly. Um, but I did check again tonight, out of curiosity, and somebody made another one earlier in the year. And the way he deleted the video, uh, deleted the ABS system, and I'm going to leave a link for the video in there. Uh, the way he deleted the ABS system is he went to the junkyard and pulled uh, the proportioning valve and the, and the brake lines off of um, a non-ABS Civic. And just threw them on here. But of course, you know, uh, it's going to be really hard for me to do that because the engine's sitting in place. And I'm not pulling this motherfucker back out. So, I probably won't do that. And I just have to buy the intercooler piping to go through here. Uh. Alright, so I guess that's pretty much all I can talk about about the car today. You know, just a little bit of stuff that I did. And I guess uh, I, when I come out here to do the mock-up, I'll probably actually do... I don't know. We'll see what happens. I can't can't predict that far into the future how I'm going to do it. You know, like I said, today was like, got a hair up my ass and decided to come out here and film. And uh, definitely a turbo rebuild coming here pretty soon. I think I have to buy a gasket for the turbo. I don't think I have one right now. I actually might hit up Eddie at Genesis and give him measurements for the... I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's a lot of bunch of I, know, I don't know. Um, yeah, man. Fucking... Definitely fucking stoked. Um... I'll probably still do these vlogs, whether these get um, high views or low views or not. Just because of the fact that the guy's been hammering at me for the longest time, yammering at me. And a lot of people were wondering what's up with the Integra. So I just figure that uh, every time I come out here and do something now, even if it's something small, I'll come out and talk about it. Well, maybe if it's not too small. But uh definitely want to keep you guys updated. And I, and I think it's safe to say that every week until this car is finished, I'm going to be doing something to it. And, and except maybe Christmas or something. I guess if something's crazy is going on, I just can't get to it. But um, I think it's safe to say that uh, progress will be very much steady from this point moving forward. Especially as I get the new parts in, as I get the harness and shit. Because um, I have no excuse. I can come out here literally anytime around the clock that I'm not working to do stuff. All right, guys. I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, two uploads, maybe three. Let's see if I can keep the juices flowing still and do the EV tech because I've been saying I was going to do that for the longest time. And watch it. I'm going to finally do it and like nobody's... There's either one or two things going to happen. One, you know, nobody's going to watch it because nobody gives a shit about VTech E or everybody's going to watch it because I've been talking about it so much that they got to see what it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching and peace.